Hi guys, Vex here. Welcome back to Davy and Shipyards, and today I have another gunboat for you. I kind of like the concept of gunboats, because honestly, in survival, if you're looking for something cheap to make that's practical and totes a lot of firepower for its size, I think that's kind of the way to go in survival. Uh, and I just like the I like the concept of gunboats. Uh, and I like knowing that if it gets uh, shot up in combat, uh, it's not really a huge loss. Because uh, I would be really sad if I lost a Corvette-class vessel. But gunboats? Eh, kind of disposable. So I believe the Bayonet-class was... Let me see here. How heavy were you, Mr. Bayonet? Uh, why is your thing on fire? Oh, right. The uh, the claw hammer took a liking to your missile pod. I don't. Yeah, uh, 180 tons for the bayonet class. Now the claw hammer, I think, weighs in a little, little bit heavier. But the claw hammer is a very goofy-looking ship. And I went ahead and finished it before I even started the video. Uh, I actually built it quite quickly, surprisingly enough. Can I get stuck in here? Can I, oh, yeah. Yeah, you can get wedged down in there. That's kind of funny. I guess I'll go ahead and stop it. Well, let's hop on in here. Boop. Put the brakes on. The claw hammer weighs in at slightly heavier, 210 metric tons. Uh... But this is a very specialized gunboat. Uh, if you can't tell already, it is meant to carry four Ramschiff Abwehr cannon into combat. The 250 millimeters. Uh, these are something like something around nine inch naval guns. Uh, so I think this is a huge amount of firepower for the weight class of the ship. Uh, this is only one less gun than my crowbar, which I kind of think my crowbar might be undergunned for its weight class. So I kind of want to revisit that at some point and make make a you know crowbar two uh, and redesign it. Uh, or I might just I might just keep the name and say, you know, whatever. But this thing, like the other gunship model, only is is incredibly Spartan. Like if you come in here, it only has it has the same kind of red light, which I really enjoyed. I really liked that. I thought the I thought the red light was kind of cool. Tell you what, let's come back and not get out into outer space. Let's come back over here. But it's only got the basics inside. Now the cockpit is encased in glass to give it a little bit more durability. The bayonet class is more for patrolling, while the claw hammer here is designed to engage capital ships. Uh, other uh, ships, basically, it's in designed to engage ships larger than itself. The bayonet's designed to be quick and sprightly and agile, and more for engaging small ships. Well, the claw hammer here is meant to snipe at large ships using its camera. So that actually ought to be on blocks camera two there we go nine and then wait a minute is this the rear that was the rear camera wasn't it and then camera there we go that's the frontal camera so I should probably rename that no well, I'm not going to right now camera four boop yeah so basically, this ship is designed to do this. 
you got your guns here. I've de oh, by the way, I deleted a bunch of stuff out of the world, including the giant uh, super thing that I made, uh, just to get better frame rates. Uh, I noticed lots of stuff laying around uh, was impacting performance slightly. Uh, so basically, right out of the box, this thing's hotbar settings ought to be pretty good. We can turn the Gatling cannons on and off. Uh, you can There's hotkeys to quickly jump to the Gatling gun views. Uh, and then 8. Oh wait, no. 7 is the bottom one. So there's the underside Gatling. Uh, the Gatling turrets are mostly just for self-defense against small craft. Uh, obviously the primary weapons are these cannons. You can fire them one by one and take pot shots from long range. Preferably uh, like something, if I went up against say like a military transport which I, th I think the military transport is the biggest enemy ship in vanilla space engineers. Uh, without that, more ships mod. But something like that, I would hop into the camera view, and then we could zoom the camera in and fire uh, from very long range. So if I wanted to hit a target precisely, like say, I want to hit right there. Like let's target it with my crosshair right there. I can bring this up, and I want to hit right there where that intersection of the seam is with cannon number two. I could do. Wait a minute. Uh, I thought two was the top left. Oh, it's the bottom. Oh, right, right, the bottom one. Okay, my bad. Sorry, sorry. It might help to label them if you want to. But the point is, the point is that you can zoom in and uh, and take. I think what five? Yeah, there we go. Okay. And take very accurate long-range shots with these racks. Uh, now you'll notice the re there is actually some recoil. Uh, which I kind of like. I think the recoil is fun. Boom! Uh, they actually move the ship. Which I, I, I think that's really cool, actually. Now, a claw hammer is not so much a weapon as it is a tool. But I, could, I just liked the name. And the ship is shaped kind of funny, like a claw. And another thing I like about this gunboat is that she's uh, asymmetrical. It's kind of a strange looking ship, but I feel like that gives it some character. Uh, there's something about asymmetrical ships that have uh, some charm, I think. Because the symmetrical ones look so sterile. Uh, now inside, we've got very compact area here. We do have an assembler. Uh, since it's already, it's, this one's actually already been published up on the workshop. Those of you who subscribe to me on Steam in the Steam workshop, which you totally should, you should go subscribe, uh, already saw this. In the back back here we have sloped armor everywhere. I like sloped armor. Let me get remove that panel, and that'll expose some of the insides of the ship. No, 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 not that, that one, not that one. There we go. So I'll take it apart for you so you can see what's going on under the hood. That's a very compact design. All the stuff is wedged in here. Uh, but once again, conveyor blocks. Uh, now the conveyor blocks are heavier than the tubes. I still like the conveyor blocks. It's kind of a trade-off. You've got to pick between weight versus economy and durability. I choose economy and durability, personally. 
Uh, and I like the rigidity that the blocks give you. I still really don't like the tubes like this. The fact that the blocks will drift away if they're not attached to either those two ends. Like the conveyor uh, blocks will hold together their help hold your ship together. The tubes are a liability because you have to reinforce around the tubes. And I think that once you start reinforcing around the tubes to make up for their disadvantage, then there's extra weight right there spent on blocks to reinforce the tubes. Uh, the conveyor, actual conveyor blocks aren't, I don't feel like they have that disadvantage. So anyway, uh, there's my thoughts on that issue. So back here, uh, the conveyor, the main conveyor array uh, feeds into the rear connector and then the feeding area for the main cannons. Uh, I'll go ahead and take the thrusters off for you. And then it comes in here to the cabin of the ship. I didn't have to do this. I mean, there's no reason I couldn't have just had this whole middle section smushed in but I kind of like it uh, I kind of like how I have it it just I don't know it's different looking uh, it might I feel like it's uh, it adds to some modularity like if you wanted to you could just take these main cannons out of this here and if you look at this you basically got this pre-made pod that's already hooked up to a conveyor and in case there's other modded weapons you might want to use I feel like there's plenty of room in here for them whether it's some sort of laser thing or uh, you could easily put in uh, the rocket launcher array where's my rockets at? there they are and they're recessed and protected which I think is kinda cool uh, you could put that in there. I could go ahead and put in... I could put an autocannon. Uh, so this whole little uh, pod over here is just... You can stick... There's enough. There's going to be enough room to stick any kind of weapon system. Modded or vanilla. So I think that's kind of cool. Uh, and the... Actually, actually, from a practical standpoint, the fact that there's a gap between the two uh, two separate, I'm going to say maybe separate hulls to either side, it means that in the middle here, I when I put the thrusters in, they're protected in the middle of the, of the ship uh, along the connecting, was it cannered fuselage? Hmm. Not sure, uh, but the, that's actually a practical point. Uh, so I, I guess I didn't just do it for looks. It, it, there is actually a very practical purpose in that the the thrusters are all tucked in uh, inside the middle of the U shape, and they're protected from outside fire unless it's coming from directly in front or behind. Uh, so the cabin in here uh, again, very 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 compact. Uh, no space is wasted. You've got your nuke reactor right here uh, hooked into the conveyor system and then the cargo uh, one small cargo container to put the ammunition and feed it in. Uh, and then a, One gyroscope, one assembler. And that's it. Very Spartan, just like the bayonet. Uh, but this one is designed to take on capital ships. Uh, and hopefully by separating the ship into two main sections, incoming fire can be drawn away from the cannons. Uh, and try to keep them alive longer. Because you have to think of all the Gatling cannon and rocket fire coming off a capital class ship. Like say for example if this thing went up against the Lacedaemon. Uh, where's the rocket fire going to be going? Where's the Gatling fire going to be going? What's it going to target first? So, if it shoots at the main pod, you know, that's not shooting at the cannon pod where the really important stuff is. So, 
hopefully those cannons can stay alive longer because of this design. And then, you know, in the back we've got the antenna tucked away. And then there's a rear camera and the front camera. And that's all there is to it. A uh, very simple design. I'm definitely going to build both gunboats in my survival world. I really want to try, especially the claw hammer, I really want to take that thing up against uh, some of the NPC ships. I think I think using the cameras to zoom in really make is going to make these 25 centimeter uh, Rumshift Avitor cannon a lot more effective because I'll be able to actually shoot from long range with them and snipe those NPC ships. Uh, so there's the floor plan. Uh, I tried to use angled blocks to make it feel not as claustrophobic. Uh, but it's still a very small ship. It's just basically the cockpit and then one passenger seat for a passenger. And that's it. Uh, it's not intended as a transport. Like the bayonet class you could use as a transport to just, you know, get all your friends inside and just go ride around somewhere. Uh, the claw hammer is just intended to take those 250 millimeter cannons into a fight. Like that's all. The whole purpose of the ship is just to get those cannons into a fight. Uh, my inspiration was actually the A-10 Thunderbolt II, more commonly known as the A-10 Warthog, uh, and the Hollander, a 35-ton battle mech that carries a Gauss rifle in the shoulder. Uh, one's a fictional, fictional uh, robotic fighting machine, and the other is a real-world anti-tank ground attack aircraft. But the thing they both share is that they're really built around carrying a main weapon system into combat. And the claw hammer does the exact same thing. It was built around that array of heavy cannon. And the whole purpose of the ship is just to get those cannons into combat uh, as cheaply and effectively as possible. And I think it does a pretty good job of that. Anyway... So that's the claw hammer uh, split open and revealed. And that's all the time I have for today. I'll see you guys next episode. Until then, as always, take it easy. And you know what? I think it, it might be time for us to make something bigger than a Corvette. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. All right, guys. See you next time.